short and long-term environmental changes. In order to fully understand this lesson, we must go through the key vocabulary. First term is population. A population is a particular group of organisms living in the same area. Subsequent populations are the ones coming after the next generation. Biodiversity, the variety of life in the world, a habitat or a, an ecosystem. Variety means many different things. Adaptation. Characteristics that help organisms survive in their environment and reproduce. Adaptations can be structural, which are a type of adaptation that makes up the physical features of an organism that help it survive. Behavioral, a type of adaptation that can be instinctive or learned and deals with the way an organism acts in order to survive. And then physiological, a type of adaptation that allows an organism to perform special functions within its body. Environmental changes. These are changes in the environment that can force organisms to find new ways of surviving. Some may need to find new sources of food, new shelter, or new reproductive partners. Others may move to a new place where they can continue to live as they did before the change. There are two types of environmental changes. The first type we're going to discuss are the short-term environmental changes. Short-term changes, meaning they occur quickly, hence the word short, affect organisms immediately, behavior of the organism changes, and the effects usually last five years or less. The examples we're going to talk about um, in this lesson are droughts, flooding, volcanic eruption, pollution, controlled forest fires, smog, and blizzards. The first type of change uh, we're going to talk about short term is drought. Populations may change migratory routes to avoid locations that suffer drought. They may also change their reproductive cycle to tie in with periods of plentiful water. And this trait will be passed on to subsequent populations, meaning the next generation. The next type of uh, short-term environmental change is pollution. Localized pollution during the Industrial Revolution in England, a lot of soot was produced from factory chimneys. That's the black, smoky substance that you see here in this picture. To help the peppered moths hide from predators in the soot, their population changed. Dark color moths became more dominant than lighter color moths. That's because the darker the color, they were easier to hide. The light color mouse stood out and the predators was easy, um, could easily see them. After the Industrial Revolution, the soot disappeared and the lighter color mouse became more dominant again. The next type of short-term environmental change is flooding. A flood can dramatically change a local environment, wiping out the natural habitats of many species. So either they will adapt to live in the new environment 
or they will be forced to move to survive. Now we're going to discuss a few of the long-term environmental changes and what that means. Long-term changes occur slowly over time, hence the uh, term long-term. So it takes a very long time and it occurs slowly. It affects organisms over subsequent pop uh, generations. So not just the next generation, but several generations after. It causes physical changes in DNA of the organism, and it can also cause extinction of species. So some of the examples we're going to talk about here are deforestation, urbanization, climate change, volcanic eruption, and ice age. Now deforestation, the word itself, the D means uh, removing and forestation of uh, trees. So we're basically cutting down the trees. So the habitats of many organisms being reduced by deforestation, the organisms will have to change and adapt to new habitats to survive. Many will be camouflaged for protection in the forest and this trait may change over subsequent populations to better suit their new environment. The next type of long-term environmental changes are volcanic eruptions. Eruptions can affect the area local to a volcano, for example, by increasing the levels of poisonous gases. Some organisms adapt over subsequent populations to tolerate these levels of gases. You see here, this organism is called a lichen. They can grow in areas where volcanoes have erupted. The next type of long-term environmental change are, is uh, global warming. Many scientists believe that the overall temperature of the world's climate is increasing. Melting ice is reducing the size of the polar ice caps. The seas and oceans are warming. Populations of organisms that cannot adapt to these changes will die out. If you look at these two pictures, one is from 1979, and the other one is from 2003. You see the drastic change in the polar ice cap, how much has melted and been removed here. And then here is the polar bear who's hanging on to a little bit of ice that's left. So global warming is very detrimental to the environment. Also with global warming, populations may have to change locations to areas that suit their natural body temperature or their genetic traits may alter to allow them to adapt to higher temperatures. So if they don't adapt to survive, they will eventually die out. All right, so that is your lesson on short-term and long-term environmental changes. I want you to make sure you filled in your note sheet that goes with this video and to answer this very essential question that is at the bottom of your note sheet. How do environmental changes, both short and long term, affect organisms and traits in subsequent populations?